name's Kieran Morrison. Uh, this is Chester Cathedral Falconry Centre and Nature Gardens. Uh, so I'm the head falconer here and basically we've got 11 different birds of prey about us. Uh, we've got a few reptiles and some ferrets and basically we're just trying to give the public a chance to encounter some wild animals they wouldn't necessarily come across in day-to-day -day life. Get them kind of nice and close up, nice and hands-on to just try and encourage them to have more of an interest in wildlife. I've been here for about three years at this point. Uh, the place has only been here for about four years old though, so still a relatively new centre. Uh, so this whole site was kind of a bit of a waste site really. Um, it was, this was kind of like an overgrown orchard, our office was an old chicken coop. Uh, and it just became a bit of a dumping ground, there was a little bit of antisocial behaviour down here. Um, so the cathedral wanted to put something down here that, you know, was more engaging for the public and just kind of made better use of the land. So I'll generally get here about nine in the morning. Um, the first stage is bringing each of the birds out of their mews. We first take them into the office, pop them on the scales and weigh them. Um, the weights will give us a vague idea of how that bird will fly for that day. If they're overweight, they'll probably be quite lazy. If they're underweight, they're gonna be overly keen. So you just want them in that nice medium ground where they're nice and healthy, got the energy, but they're still interested in doing the work and getting the food from you. Okay, so this is Buck, our male geo falcon. So you just simply step forward onto the scales like that. And then I'll just adjust down this end. So he should be around the two pound four mark. So we start off with the two pound four. That's still too heavy for him. So we'll adjust the weights from there. Yeah, so he weighs in at about two pound three and a quarter at the moment. Good lad buck. Uh, then bring him out here onto the lawns. This is what we call weathering. So as it says on the tin, it gives them the chance to experience natural weather, the same as they would in the wild. Uh, then generally around 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock most days is when we start our flying. Um, so we'll take four birds out for each flying display. Um, and they all fly in their own style, they've all got their own unique personality. So we do what works best for the individual bird to show that off. Uh, and then after the demonstrations are done, if we have any other birds left who haven't been flown, we'll then just fly them throughout the course of the afternoon. Um, even if it's kind of after the point where we've closed, we can continue with the flying just to make sure that all the birds are well exercised. Then, as they each fly at the end of their flying, that's when they get their full dinner. So they're all nice and fed by the end of the day, and then we can pop them away back into their muse. Uh, throughout the course of the day, whenever we've got the time, uh, and with you know our volunteers and other members of staff here, that's when all the cleaning jobs get done as well, um, and just the general maintenance of the centre. My name's Kim, I'm Emily, uh, we just come for the day out in Chester and we had a look online at the Falcon Wren, something that we'd be interested in looking at today. I really like owls so that's what attracted me to this, so I was interested in coming to have a look at them, what they have here. Yeah, 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 I've not been before. No, it's interesting to see them when we don't really have them in this country, like the vulture and you know, just birds that you wouldn't see and you get to hold them. It's brings you closer to nature in a way, I think, even though it's in a city centre, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's nice to have like areas where you can interact with animals, like in an urban space. I think particularly because some of the, like the falcons, they are actually used in pest control in some countries, aren't they? So I think it's interesting to sort of meet the birds and see them. And I think it's good for kids as well, it's educational as well. Yeah. So your red-footed falcons, they're not ones that you particularly commonly find in falconry. Um, partly due to their size, but mainly down to their diet. So any guesses of what she'd hunt out in the wild? Yeah, insects, that's a big part of it. Uh, so little things, yeah. Uh, so things like dragonflies and locusts and crickets. And because falconry is traditionally a hunting sport, that's not really what most falconers tend to fly after. You know, you're normally going for things like pheasant and rabbit, which obviously she's not going to be able to catch. So not many people do tend to keep them, but they are fantastic little falcons. Uh, I think she's absolutely amazing and definitely looks wise, one of the prettiest going. Uh, however, it obviously takes a lot of skill in order to be able to ch ch chase something like a dragonfly down. They're very quick and agile on the wing, so she has to be as well. And she's also an incredibly fast little bird. So has anyone got any guesses at her top speed? About 40 miles per hour? Anyone else? No? It's actually about 150 miles per hour. My name's Maddie Shellcock. Um, I'm t an enterprise assistant here. Um, so what I do is I look after the customer service stuff, the front of house stuff, um, and then I'm learning to do stuff with the birds as well. Um, so it's not part of my job, but it's still part of sort of the experience that I have here overall. 
it's definitely it's definitely a main point. A lot of people get very excited when you talk about it, and a lot of people um, know where we are because they've done something on the field at one point or another. Um, like we've had people come down who used to have like school sports days here or play cricket here and stuff like that. And then whenever you mention it, it's very rare to find someone that doesn't know about it, um, which is good. So it gets a lot of people excited. <laughs> With the cathedral, it's definitely the history. Like I do some shifts up there sometimes and I'm always learning new things, like really little things and about sort of who used to be there, what happened at certain times. Um, but the most interesting part about the falconry is definitely the birds. Because um, they've all got their own personalities and it's so interesting to learn about them as individuals and as their species and stuff like that. And it's I've been here for over a year now and you still learn new things every day just because they are that interesting. Hopefully if you're about in Chester, this is a, well, we like to think it's a brilliant place to come down and visit. Um, you get the chance to be very hands-on, get to have a hold of a bird, also meet our ferrets and our reptiles. Uh, and like I say, just learn a little bit more about species that you may not have met otherwise uh, in your lifetime. And hopefully after being here, we can help you as you're going around the world, just pay a little bit more attention to some of the birds that are up in the sky because it's amazing living in a city how many birds you can actually see wild. So here in Chester there's wild peregrines, sparrowhawks, kestrels, all of those sort of things. And I find a lot of people once they've been here and met our birds, they become a little bit more aware of that and they get to see those things more regularly throughout their days.